All right, so let's go through this real quick. I'm going to lay out a little story for you on each one of these subsequent slides. You tell me what the appropriate label would be from your perspective. Using a label to gather an insight. This particular um, situation was a husband and wife. They're in a discussion. The husband cannot understand why she cannot get her head around the value of an artificial Christmas tree. Makes too much sense to him. It, it's expensive, but he usually pays for herself after the third year or so. Clean up. Easy. All you got to do is bend the branches back up, throw that doggone thing in a box, and put it back in the garage until the next year. Some of them come pre-decorated. They got lights in them already. How easy is that? The dogs show less of an appetite for making the tree their own, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and I'm not still stepping on pine needles in August because I had to drag that thing out to the curb. I don't have to be angry with the garbage people who say they're going to come pick it up for recycling and then two weeks later it's still on the curb. It's a no-brainer. And the wife says, Christmas for me is more than just about convenience. It's about sights, it's about sounds, it's about smells. And I remember as a kid growing up the smells that used to come out of the kitchen when my mother was baking, the sounds of Christmas music being played throughout the house, and the smell of pine in the living room. Something that I will always cherish. I remember going to Christmas tree farms and picking out the tree that we wanted. Cutting it down, tying it to the roof of the car, driving it home, and putting it up. And it was almost like a party at our house. And those are the kinds of memories that I'm trying to recreate for our children. How do you label that? Seems, she said, seems like a real Christmas tree means a lot to you. Actually, the label that he hit her with was, it seems like you had real Christmas trees growing up. And then she went on about the power of a real Christmas tree in her childhood and the nostalgia that it created for her. So I, I'll leave it up to you guys to guess what kind of tree they wound up getting. I thought you were going to tell us how we talked to her the gift. Nope. Yeah. He, he, he backed down from that one. <laughs> how about, it seems like you're stuck in the past. Yeah, that would have gone over well. So, hey, real quick, I want to I wanna, I wanna highlight that for a second. What was your label? It seems like you're stuck in the past. Seems like you're stuck in the past. You hear how easy that rolled off his tongue? <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. You're going to feel the urge to want to jab at people with these labels. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to want to do it. You're going to feel that urge. I will tell you that if you can taste how good the words are going to taste when they come out of your mouth and go into their ear, they're probably the wrong words for you to be using. Yeah, Tone's, Tone's not going to rescue you, you in that. Say, yeah, but resist that urge to try to jab at people with this stuff. This, these skills can be used for good or evil. They are just like the force. In fact, some people, and they're usually the ones who haven't had a lot of experience with us, say, well, what you're talking about sounds like manipulation. And it was either Sandy or Barbara. One of you guys talked about it earlier. What's the difference between manipulation and influence? Intent. intent. What's your intent? All of you uh, in this room, all of you in this room have, have one of these, right? All of you use these on a regular basis? Do you know there are people on this planet that use these for nefarious and sometimes illegal purposes? And yet, you still use yours. Well, the black swan skills are the same way. Can you use them to get over on people without question? We don't espouse it, we don't teach it, and we will never back your play in that regard. Something subtle, something hidden. Fundraiser, trying to match up a donor with a charity. 
She's done her homework on this lady. This lady has an affinity for the Girl Scouts of America. So she's put together a portfolio of five to six projects. Hanging in the balance is 5K. She brings the woman into the office. They sit in the conference room. She opens the portfolio and she starts to slide projects, proposals, ideas across the desk. And this is what she's getting from the other side of the desk. And every project that she slides across the desk, it gets slid back to her. Nothing's been said to this point. What are you going to do with that? How are you going to label that? So you're talking about labeling affect. What are you seeing? What is your intuition picking up on? It seems like you're not connecting with any of these projects. Seems like you're not connecting with any of these projects. Yeah, it seems like you have a specific project. I love that. Yeah. Hey. When they tell you no, there is something that they would say yes to. So you need to flip side that label. Give it to me again. Seems like, you have a specific Seems like you have a specific project in mind. If everything I've given you is not working, that means you've got something else in mind. He just flip flopped that label. Every label has a reverse or an opposite or a flip side. Nicely done. Who else? What are you picking up on? She's shaking her head. She's furrowing her brow. She's pursing her lips. Maybe you missed it. Maybe you need to say, what else is important? Uh-uh, no question. <laughs> Your intention is good. Put it in the form of a label. Seems like something else is important. Oh, seems like something else is important. Perfect. In the back. It seems like you have your doubts Seems like you, all, you guys are all doing fantastic. What she hit her with was, I'm sensing some hesitation with these projects. Now. See, you picked up, somebody's paying attention. She says, uh, it's, I'm sensing some hesitation with these projects. Well, the, this person, this, uh, this fundraiser, she had been around the block with us for many years. And she was at an expert level, if you will, at the time. And so she had started to experiment with some different language. I'm, pe I'm keeping you guys in a box right now because I want you to get your sea legs under you. Once you get your sea legs under you, you're well beyond 67 repetitions, then you can start to play with it. She, she says, I'm sensing some hesitation with these projects. The response that she gets is, yes, there is hesitation with the projects. I'll tell you why. I know for a fact that these projects are going to be held in a public place. If these projects or these uh, programs are held in a public place, the likelihood that girls who are not affiliated with the Girl Scouts of America are going to take part in it. It's very real. And I do not want my money going to support a program where the girls aren't 100% vested in the Girl Scouts of America. How do you label that? Sounds like you really love the Girl Scouts. That's a surface level. Not bad, not great. Somebody go deeper. What is she really saying? Sounds like the Girl Scouts of America have made a difference in your life. That's going on a deeper level. What else? Somebody give me something different. It sounds like you want a private venue. So, sounds like you want a private venue. What else? Sounds like you'd like to have more girls involved in the Girl Scouts. Sounds, who said that? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you'd like to have more girls involved with the Girl Scouts of America. What she said was, it seems like it's important for you that I find the right match. The, girl, the woman, I'm the girl, the woman wrote her a check for 5K, paid her the order of, was left blank. She slid it across the desk and said, I know you'll do the right thing. Mm, mislabels. When something doesn't add up, something is confusing you. This is a uh, mixed use building in a historic area of this town. Nothing's going up, nothing's getting torn down. The building is at 98% occupancy. Basically, people are lined up around the block to become tenants of this building. And for all intents and purposes, the owner is in the, build in the basement printing money. And the building is for sale. You're a real estate agent, new to a brokerage. They give you this as a lead. What do you want to know right off the bat? That's what I want to know. 
If this is a mixed-use building in a historic part of town, and he's printing money in the basement, why would he ever sell this building? I want to know. Our guy knows that the question why makes people defensive, so he doesn't want to make the listing agent defensive, so he formulates a mislabel. And he says, it seems like the seller must not have confidence in the future of this market if the buyer or seller is trying to sell this cash cow. He didn't know if it was correct or not, but he threw it out there. The response that he got from the listing agent was, no, inexperienced real estate agent, that's not what it is at all. My client is underwater on several properties. And he's got to start liquidating as fast as possible. The desire to correct is irresistible. There is no way that you can convince me that the seller gave the listing agent permission to release that kind of information to anybody, let alone a prospective buyer. And so he quickly realized that he could get this building for pennies on the dollar. He ran back to his brokerage, and that's exactly what they did. They wrote up the contract and bought the building for pennies on the dollar. He missed something, though. What did he miss? The other deals. What other deals? The ones that were underwater. Don't be so sure about what you want that you wouldn't take something better if it came along. Underwater on several properties. Several as in two? Several as in 20. What does that mean? He left money on the table. For the price that they were going to pay for that one building, there's no telling how many more they could have bought. But he was so focused on where he wanted to end up, he didn't take something better when it came along.